All right, Boulevard Club, welcome back to our 5 at 5 session. Coach Tristan over here, Coach yeah. Tafan. We are focusing on our badminton footwork today. I think it's yeah. our third week of doing this. Um, you're getting a little bit tired just from the rehearsals, right? Yeah. I'm being too hard on you. Sweaty. Swe- sweaty. All right, so today we're going to focus on the shuffle, kind of really focusing somewhat some of a basic movement, the, the mechanics of the shuffle, but really focusing on being efficient in the way we move. We'll have three different progressions to, to make things a lot more challenging. And if we've got some time, we'll add uh, kind of an angle directional thing as well. So let's yeah. get right to it. Um, it would be certainly easier if we were able to, to demo this way. We have really limited here in terms of our space. So I'm, we're actually going to do most of our movement in, in this direction. Hopefully you can still see our feet moving. Um, what's important as our, as our starting point is really have an athletic looking ready position, which is not only valuable for Valentin, but really valuable for sports in general. So nice soft position, shoulder width, whatever is comfortable. And unlike squatting where your weight is more on the back, we're tilted a bit more forwards. Okay, so this is really important as a starting point. Hands kind of out here. Eventually you'd have obviously your racket. So in terms of shuffling, what I'm really focused on here, let me give you a demo. Is going to be quick little steps. We're going to do about the length of the ladder on the floor. You do not have to have this floor ladder. We just happen to have it from, from other, uh, other videos. So quick little steps. Quick little steps. Okay. What we want to avoid is this. So watch my head here. You can see the small space between head and, and, and ceiling. We don't want this. The more bouncing I do, I'm wasting time going from point A to point B. Really important for bounding players to understand that it's your... It's almost like a, a rock skidding across water. We want that movement to be pretty steady. Hopefully the space between my head and the ceiling is kind of consistent. All right, Tristan, I want you to try that, please. Sorry, let me just get out of the way. Are we ready? Go. Once he starts doing a couple sets, he'll probably get into a groove where I think for him we're looking at it before steps. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's it. So he's looking at about four steps, and I think I was probably doing three steps. Obviously, my legs are <laughs> a little bit longer for now. Soon, yeah. yours will be okay. potentially as long. All right, so again, with this shuffle movement, once the technique is good, let's start to add some really bounding specific stuff. So where we're going to add like a jump. And as you can imagine here, there's not much clearance. I can even do this because, Justin, watch over here. I'm going to shuffle and then jump in terms of distance. So within his steps, he did four steps. He's going to do one and two and three and then jump. Okay. So I was doing it. I think I was maybe three steps. So one, two, and then I jump. One, two, and then I jump. One, two, and then I jump. Okay. So my jump is all about traveling distance wise, not height wise. All right, Tristan, you ready? Go. Quicker steps. Yes. Quick, quick, quick. Jump. There we go. Quick, quick, quick. Jump. Nice. And stop there. Very good. So eventually how we can build on this is encourage yourself or whoever's doing this to start to bring the hands up as you're jumping. Because what we're trying to simulate is eventually you'd have a rack in your hand and you're getting into that forehand side cutoff or backhand side when you have no time to turn and rotate where you have to go open stance, which is a little bit more doubles but also singles. Then it gives us that ability. Do it one more time where your hands will come up as if you had a rack in your hand. Okay. Ready? Quick. Where's it? Quick, quick, jump. We want the feet, the sound to be kind of rhythmic. So, pa, 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 pa. Pa, 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 pa. Who's your pa, 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 pa? Da, 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 da. That doesn't work with daddy. Good. Woo. Heart rate. It's going up. All right. Let's bring this to another level. I want you to grab a towel. Okay. In our case, rubber band. Rubber band. We happen to have this, and we rarely use this. So we're going to use a rubber band. The towel would work very well. This obviously has more of an elastic property to it. Um, if he was a bit stronger, yeah. uh, especially heavier and, 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 and stronger, then he would pull that rubber band more, but still effective. All right, so now he's in a shuffle position. I'm just going to create a little bit of resistance. So it's going to be resistance towards kind of the end of the ladder, and then we'll just have him recover no resistance. Okay, ready? Go. So you'll, he'll probably end up doing normal recovery. So take away no tension. Go again. So I can resist as much as I want. Good. So obviously he's going to have more steps. And now his muscles have to work in a different way. It's almost like weight training. Switch sides. Oh. Okay. And again, if it wasn't for viewing purposes, we would probably do this where, well, actually we could do it this way. Or we could also at the end, I would switch sides and create the resistance this way. There's different ways to do it. I kind of like this way because yeah, there's a recovery, huh? I mean, you don't really need recovery, but the average human being needs recovery. Huh. You're nonstop. I'm not average. 24-7. You're not average. Definitely not, right? Here we go. 
get a bit of bicep curl work here as the the coach again now obviously if i hold it at the end or i hold it closer will determine a bit how how much this is going to stretch go and back now what's really fun once you build the trust is you can get him to go really really far and then let it go and kind of, kind of launch him all right so then he'll go flying and that adds a whole new element we can work on the diving <sighs> Right, because diving is really important in badminton. You're not buying this. You don't think this is funny. No reaction. No. no. Okay, it's not funny. All right. So let's try one more. We're going to add a bit of directional change. So now I'm going to go kind of the equivalent of forehand side as a right-handed player. So one, two on an angle. One, two on an angle this way. One, two, one, two. And quick steps. One, two, one, two, two, one, two. Tag your it. Go. Ashley, one sec. Let me, let me go out of the way. Good. Okay, so obviously the movement backwards into the forehand corner, the movement backwards into the backhand corner, and the forwards into the front back. So we're really kind of starting to simulate the front two corners and the back two corners. With this, we could also add resistance. We won't right now, but you can always, always add more progressions to it. All right, one more time. Here we go. Fast, fast. Good, good, good. Reverse it. I'm a little bit in your way here. Nice. Okay, so again, he's not traveling really, really far but it's two quick steps. And what we're doing is we're developing that quick, quick, ready for the jump. Quick, quick, ready for the lunge. Are you ready for the lunge? Are you ready for the jump? Yeah. Of course you are. Are you ready for video games? Yeah. You're always ready for those. All right, thank you very much. We will join you guys tomorrow for the five and five total towel workout with Coach Deb, in your case, Coach Mommy. Tristan, yeah. great job as usual. Hey, come on, eye contact, look at me, look at me, look at me. All right, thank you very much. We'll see you tomorrow at five.